kid, I'm Zach Romero, and uh, have I got a strange story to tell you. Recently, in my home on the sunny shores of Florida, uh, my family and I have been rebuilding uh, my younger brother's room because he's getting older, and so, you know, as time goes on, got to change out certain pieces of furniture and some paint. And uh, during this rebuilding process, we came across something really strange. Uh, moving my younger brother's bed which hadn't been done in mm, close to 15 years, uh, we found something. Something unexplainable. Spliced. Spliced was wedged underneath my brother's bed in a way that nobody could reach, and there was no seemingly natural way it got there. It's like it, it appeared there by some kind of horrible black magic. No one remembers buying it. And uh, actually, according to the back, it's a screening copy, which means it's not even the complete DVD. In fact, it says on the back, coming to DVD and video, 2003. So, with this weird mystical black magic movie suddenly in my lap, I had to move the request aside for a second to watch this, and, uh, wow. Spliced stars Drew Lachey, lead singer of 98 Degrees. That's right, lead singer of a boy band in a horror film. The movie's just a bad burger marinated in mediocrity. It's cheesy and bland and boring to watch, and in addition to Drew, it also stars almost Natalie Portman. The story of the film is almost Natalie Portman loves watching scary movies and seems to get off on them for some reason. It's almost sexual, you know? So, the problem is, every time she watches a scary movie, she ends up having a horrible nightmare about it later, and uh, sleepwalking around and just causing a big mess. And when I say the dreams are horrible, I mean like this. Look at this! Why is that such a big deal? It's just cake filling. Oh my god! Let me help you with that. <laughs> Scary Dream Dad, definitely my favorite character. <laughs> she loves watching horror movies, but uh, her kind of weird, kind of creepy stepdad doesn't want her to. But she does anyway, then he goes to drive and, and take her home, he ends up getting into a car accident and dying, she blames herself. And then it turns out that there's this killer following her around. And the killer, I swear to you, the first time I saw him, I thought he was Brain Guy from Mystery Science Theater 3000. Can he pony? Can I pony? <laughs> if we can harness this level of terror. So she immediately assumes that it's Drew Lachey, and who wouldn't, honestly? We get to experience her running away, and uh, your standard Scooby-Doo storyline. So the basic idea of the killer of this movie is that there's this hip new movie in town called The Wisher, and the killer in that is apparently chasing almost Natalie Portman and her friends around town, and that's who she thinks Nick Lachey is, but it's not, and... It's a movie within a movie, but they both suck? I, it, it, it's dumb. One particular scene that frustrated the crap out of me is even though this was made in 2003, all the technology is probably around 92. Like, it's really ridiculous. And uh, there's a scene where almost Natalie Portman and her buddy are trying to illegally download the movie to see the ending. And the whole scene is just really stupid. Like, just like eye-gougingly dumb. Like, how are they screwing this up? Wait, if you need to find out how the movie ends, why would you pick part one? That doesn't make any sense. We have to find out how the movie ended. The Wisher. Well, the woodsman cut down the first tree, another tree rose up in its place, and the Wisher lay there still, waiting for a new master to come along. To awaken it. What's that supposed to mean? This is from the beginning of the movie! Yeah, it's part one. What do you expect? Shit. Wait, 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 wait. When the woodsman finally figured 
out what was going on, he knew he had to destroy the Wisher. When he tried, the Wisher turned on him. Killed him. Wait, is this entire movie just like ten minutes long? Like that doesn't. Why is part three just a slight variation of part one? Like it's just a small continuation of something that's supposedly the way beginning of the film. Debbie, look at this. What is it? I understand this is supposed to be building up suspense, but it's just awful. It's just really, really rotten. Oh, and go where? Okay, wait, wait, wait. Wisher, the only way you can stop is by wishing. Ah, by wishing what? And of course the ending is, like I said, your Scooby-Doo ending, where it was the character you saw twice in the movie, but didn't really seem that threatening. And it doesn't really make any sense. The little twist ending at the end is horrible. All in all, this movie is, if you took the movie Scream, took out all the cool and inventive parts of it, took out all the twists and all the parodying of cliché, that bare-bones piece of crap that you'd have left, that's spliced. Are you talking about the Wisher again? <laughs> oh, shit! Nice going! Shit, I got slimed! Help me! So all in all, I, I don't even know if you could find a copy of this, but if you can, don't watch it. It's awful. It's really, really bad. Uh, and I gotta say, Drew, stick with your failed boy band, because you're not cutting it as an actor, buddy. I'm sorry. It's just, ugh. Did you lock the door? I have no words.